Hi friends, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the Third, and this is a knit and chat episode all about books. So I did a knit and chat episode about three months ago where I talked all about the books that I have been reading and you all really enjoyed it. So I added to my recording schedule to do about once a quarter a book talk, T-A-L-K, that's why I said it weird, <laughs> video just going over all of the books that I have read with my reviews to share with you. It didn't really feel appropriate to me to add a reading section to my regular podcast episodes. So that's why I decided to create a whole new, oops, sorry about the buses. <laughs> so that's why I decided to add a whole new kind of series where I talk about the books that I am reading. Um, I know not everyone is a book girly, but for those of you that are, I know you enjoy talking about books with me and sharing recommendations. So I'll be asking for your recommendations as well as sharing mine. So yeah, I'm excited to be here to talk about books with you. And I hope you are too. So one little piece of housekeeping that I would like to address from the get-go is that I have become a bookshop.org affiliate. So bookshop.org is a way to support your local bookstore by buying books online as an alternative to Amazon. So you can choose your local bookstore. When I lived in Boston, I supported Paper Cuts JP. And now that I live in Portland, I support Powell's. So with every purchase I make online, a little bit of money goes to them. And now that I have a bookshop storefront, you can buy any of the books that I talk about here and send a little bit of money not only to your local bookshop, but also to me. So I have all of the books that I'm going to talk about listed down below, as well as my general storefront. So if you're already planning on buying books online, this is a great alternative to Amazon that also supports some of your favorite content creators like me and your local bookstore. So please consider taking a look down below and the next time you are buying some books to be shipped to you, um, you can consider doing so through my link down below. Okay, one more piece of business, which is that I am knitting on my sock on one of the pairs of socks for the M to the third Socktober knit along. This is a knit along that is happening exclusively in my discord. There's always a link down below to sign up. Even though it is not required for your sock project to be Halloween-y or festive, I couldn't resist. So I am just knitting this vanilla sock with some self-patterning yarn and I'm just having a blast. I only cast these on a couple days ago and I've already um, made some significant progress. So I'm going to work on that while I chat with you about some of the books that I have read over the last three months. So I'm going to divide it up with some like fluffy books that I read, um, some cozy books, and then I'm going to share with you the books that I have been reading as part of an in-person book club um, that I have with some knitting friends, which has been really, really lovely. <laughs> and then from there, I'm gonna share with you some of my top books from the last little period of time. So let's get started. The first one that I read is called The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams. This is a romance book. And to be completely honest, I was surprised by how into it I was. Because the premise of this book is that there's this woman who is is plus size, very body positive, and she works for like a health and fitness kind of online magazine. And so her and a coworker who she's really competitive with, um, both decide to try competing, basically apps that provide fitness, like personalized fitness coaching to one another. So in the process of this, of course, she falls for her fitness instructor who just happens to be the owner of the company and the creator of the company. Um, shenanigans ensue. It's like a very outlandish, but also it was very sweet. And I didn't know how sweet it would be to have sort of like this, like kind of jockey guy, a jock, 
a fitness bro, <laughs> if you will. Um, just like really see this woman for who she was and meet her where she was at. And like for that to not really be an issue and almost like more for her to be making it an issue than it was. I don't know if that sort of em embodies what I'm trying to say. But um, it was very, like, a very healing and sweet read. It was sexy. And, um, yeah, I definitely recommend it. Definitely some, like, just, you know, if you have body issues yourself, just take some care while reading it because it does sort of delve into that. But um, I don't think it's very deep. I think it's very approachable. And um, I found it, I found it very very nice to read and I enjoyed it thoroughly. If you haven't watched the previous Knit and Chat episode where I talk about books, I used this sort of rating system that I found on TikTok that just like made a lot of sense to me. So it's a five star rating system. Five is like impact for like forever. Like you just like you read it and it just like really resonates with you. A four is like enjoyed it, gonna think about it for a couple of months good book. A three is like very solid, enjoyable, but not like really a lasting kind of like impact. A two is like, I read it, it was fine. <laughs> and a one is like a did not finish. So that's kind of the star system that I prescribe to because it makes sense to me. Um, so with that being said, I would give this about a 3.5. Um, yeah, I'm not mad at all that I read it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It did have a little bit of an impact on me. And, um, you know, if you're in the market for a rom-com, it's a very solid choice. So the next two books are a new, kind of like a mystery cozy series called the Evanfall Witches B&B series. The first one is called In the Company of Witches and the second one is called When the Crows Away. And they were very, very sweet. So the premise is that there's a young woman who um, is a witch and lives with her aunts and they both, and they all run an Airbnb. And they live in this town where people are sort of like aware of witches and they sort of just like accept that the this family is magical. Um, so it's, you know, it's just very cozy. And then of course there's a murder and then they have to figure out what happened. Um, so we start the story with the main character having lost her husband and she has not been engaging with magic since this happened and it's been like maybe a couple of years. And so really it's it starts as like her healing journey um, and she you know grows a little bit each each book. And I have to say the end of the second book left with a really great um, cliffhanger. It wasn't too upsetting that like another book isn't coming out for a year, but it made me excited for the next one. The whole vibe is very cozy, very fall, very autumnal, um, and you know, witchy. So there is some magic in it, but shenanigans ensue as, as cozy books and rom-coms <laughs> are want to do shenanigans ensue. And uh, it was just a really, really fun read. I thoroughly enjoyed kind of being immersed in the town, um, getting to know the characters and their quirks, and also getting excited for what's coming next. So if you're looking for something cozy for spooky season, but not scary, um, this series is a really, really good option. Yeah, I would rate both of those solid threes. I'm very excited for the next book and um, yeah. So the next book I read is very much a finally I read this book <laughs> and it was Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. So I like everyone else <laughs> read Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses and just absolutely love them. Um, and the Crescent City series like it just ugh amazing. Um, I don't have to tell you about them, I don't think. <laughs> but she has a whole series called like the Assassin's Blade series, I believe. And the first book in that is The Throne of Glass. And so finally, I read that on my Kindle. 
Um, me and my former roommate from Boston actually share Kindle libraries and she had like all of them. And I was like, okay, let me like read this. It took me a while to get through. And um, if you do any sort of research into like the author, author's lore <laughs> around, um, you know, Akatar or Throne of Glass, you'll find that Sarah J. Mass was really young when she wrote this first book. Like, I think she was in her teens. So it definitely, like, I was prepared, I guess, for that. Um, and it definitely felt like it. Like, there was still a lot of really interesting storytelling in it and ideas. I think it was a pretty, like, in a lot of ways, it was a pretty unique premise. And I did enjoy it, but I wasn't like totally captivated. But it's definitely one of those series where people constantly tell you to just like keep going. Um, so I did enjoy it. I read it, but I had other other stuff to read. So I haven't gotten past that first book. That first book I would say is about a two for me, um, but I have not given up on the series because I do love what Sarah J Maas writes and plan on reading more of it. Um, but for now, it's set aside. I am glad I read that first one to kind of introduce me to the series and uh, I'll keep you updated as I as I read more of it because who knows maybe in three months I will be like you have to read the entire series so we can talk about it like tomorrow <laughs> and then finally in knit lit romance land I listened to real men knit by Kwana Jackson now if you have not heard of these knitting romance books <laughs> Uh, it is a newer series. I think that there are two out. I actually have a hard copy of the second book um, on my nightstand, so I'll be starting that soon. I didn't realize it was number two in the series, but here we are. So Real Men Knit is about a group of foster brothers whose adoptive mom ran a knitting store in the Bronx. So Mama Joy is the name of their adoptive mother and she owns a yarn store where not only does she sell yarn and is kind of a staple within the community, but she also teaches a lot of the neighborhood kids how to knit and she teams up with the community center. And so the boys, even though they have their own lives, sort of like are having a really hard time giving up like the legacy of this shop. So one of them decides to continue running the shop and has Mama Joy's assistant help him and romance ensues. So it was fun. It was it was a rom-com with knitting going on in the background. <laughs> um, I don't think it was like revolutionary. Um, I, I'm not like falling over myself to recommend it. Um, but I did enjoy it and I'm glad I read it. So that also gives like a solid, solid two, two stars for me. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really glad they exist. I feel like they will be very meaningful to, um, to someone out there. I am generally really excited to sort of see the trend of cozy rom-coms and cozy mysteries getting more diverse characters. Um, like as the main characters, even as the periphery characters. Um, so that's kind of how I felt about this book. It was fine, it was enjoyable, it was very rad that the main characters were all people of color. And um, yeah, I'm just excited to have seen recently that that is becoming a trend where these books are just getting more diverse. And that's uh, the point that I'm trying to make. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk about a series that I have read so many of um, called the Vampire Knitting Series. So I've talked about this series many times. The covers are just like so ridiculous. They're short, almost like novellas. They're so short. And they're, they have truly not very much substance. And when I'm like working on something, I love getting the audiobooks of these and kind of putting them on in the background. They're like, you know, like the character development is not very deep. The murders are just like so frou-frou, <laughs> which, you know, you're talking about murder and you're saying that. So 
you know, take with that what you will. But I read like, I think I read five or six of them over the last three months. And again, I just get them through Libby, through my library. I put on the audiobook and I usually listen at like 1.3 speed. So they're like only like, it takes me like four hours to get through one. But they're really excellent to have on in the background when I'm doing dishes, when I'm even like showering or getting ready for the day, I'll just kind of put it on to keep me company. Um, and so all I have left is the last, the last and most recent book in the series, which I think is like number 14, maybe. And then there's actually now a spin-off series <laughs> based in Cornwall. So I've put both of those audiobooks on hold. Um, I'll get to them when I get to them. And um, yeah, so if you're just looking for something, it really takes up the space for me more of like a podcast than anything, um, where I just kind of like put it on while I'm cleaning and stuff. Um, you don't really have to pay very much attention, but I know I've gotten a bunch of people into these books and you know, you get, you get what you get with them. They're <laughs> very, um, very basic. They're fun. They're a romp. She does not choose the cop to get with. Um, I know that is a spoiler, but I feel like it is an important spoiler because at first you're like, girl, please. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's the Vampire Knitting series. I've listed all like five or six of them that I've read um, on my bookshop. And you can take a look at the first one in the series or, you know, start wherever you want. So, yeah, that sort of ends the like romance cozy mystery portion of the episode. If you are wanting me to just be more succinct and tell you which ones I'd recommend, the Evanfall Witches B&B &B series is probably my number one recommendation. If you are just dipping your toes into romance or curious about dipping your toe, it, toes into romance, The Fastest Way to Fall is a really great feminist um, book. So if you're romance curious, definitely check that one out. And if you're cozy mystery curious and wanting to feel the spooky vibes, the Evanfall Witches B&B &B series is um, a really, really good recommendation for you. So next I get to talk about my book club. So I've started a book club with some of the ladies who I work with and who um, come to our weekly knit night and it's just been a blast. We get together and eat and just like talk about books for like a few hours. Just like what book have you read? What book did you read in high school? And it's just like such a blast. We knit, we eat, we talk about books, nothing could be better. <laughs> So I wanted to talk about the few books that we've chosen um, for book club. The first one that we chose was When Women Were Dragons. This was actually a book that I recommended when I joined the book club and we all read it. So it is a really interesting book that kind of reminds me of The Handmaid's Tale because of the way that it is written, where it's kind of sharing reports from the future about the time period, but then it's also mixed in with first person narration by um, a young woman whose mother turned into a dragon. <laughs> so the premise of this book is that women spontaneously turn into dragons. Um, and there was a mass dragoning event that happened and impacted basically like the history of America because of how many women were turned into dragons and disappeared. Some came back, but a lot of them turned into dragons and just stay that way forever. Um, it was at first it was like, what, <laughs> what is going on? And I think overall, what I feel about the book is that it was a little contrived. Um, like, I definitely get it. But the metaphor was a little bit on the nose. And I felt like it would have done better as a short story, which I think 
once we were in book club we talked about and it was supposed to be a short story. It felt very very developed in the beginning with a lot of description and a lot of explanation and then it just like felt like it ended too fast and there wasn't like I was like we were getting so much detail and explanation and then it just felt like it ended very abruptly and it was sort of like whoa okay I thought there would be more than this. So that aspect of the book was interesting and a little distracting I guess from the point but um, again it felt like a to me it felt like a very white feminist book. <laughs> um, that's the best way for me to describe it. I think that in general um, the idea of like fantasy and maybe magical realism sort of having that feminist lens is interesting and cool but um, I think it could have gone a little deeper and been elaborated on at the end. That being said I would give it a solid three and I enjoyed it but um, yeah with all of those kind of caveats. So I wouldn't say everyone has to go out and read it. I think if you are kind of like in in a space of feminism already, like my world is very like feminist, I guess, and like women centric. I don't think like it will do much to you, do much for you. Um, but that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. And uh, it was a nice sort of book to all read together. Now the second book that we read was The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. Um, if you have not read any of Louise Erdrich's books, I would highly recommend it. I have read um, a couple of her more recent books. I have not read her like earlier works, um, but her storytelling and her character development are really unmatched. And Louise Erdrich herself is native and so all of the characters in her book are native women who are just very complex characters who you are rooting for but like are flawed. And I think being able to do that with a lot of empathy and compassion is just like a skill. I would say of all the books that I have read it was like the most literary um and it was just it was just really really good so she actually owns a bookstore in Minneapolis and this story takes place around a bookstore in Minneapolis that is largely run by native women so that was really I really enjoy when authors kind of write love letters to literature and that was very much what this book was. That being said, um, we were all kind of speculating that while she was writing this book, COVID happened and so she just started writing it into the book as well. Mind you, it was also in Minneapolis where the the Black Lives Matter like spark was really ignited. So you know you're reading this book and it is what I'm talking about. It's like this love letter to literature. It's a ghost story. Um, it's this really interesting complex you know story about the relationships of women with men and other women um, whether that is family or romantic, etc. And then it feels very jarring the way all of a sudden COVID hits. Like I wasn't expecting it. I didn't read too much um, about the description of the book. And we were like all, you know, discussing this um, at our book club. And some of us couldn't read like some of us got to that point where like no I don't need to do this right now um, you know but I think that's how it felt COVID hitting was like it hit us all over the head we all had whiplash and I think it was really really cool to see how she she captured it and I don't know if it was like intentional 
but it was it captured the feeling of COVID starting in a way that I have not read or seen yet. Um, and I'm excited for it to kind of exist, you know, as its own thing for sure, but also exist as a record of what it felt like for COVID to hit because it really was so shocking and jarring and, you know, all of those things. Like it, you know, I don't have to tell you because you were there too. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, it was kind of intense because I was like, yeah, no, I, <laughs> Like, I felt all those things, I experienced all those things, and then on top of it to be happening in Minneapolis, um, you know, yeah, I just really, it was, it had, it was really impactful. Um, I think it's one of the five star reads for this year, and I really am eager to read more of her books. Um, the other book of hers that I have read is called The Night Watchmen. And again, it was just full of these like complex characters with like a lot of character development throughout the story. And she's just like an amazing storyteller. So yeah, definitely. I don't know if I would recommend the sentence at this point in time. Because <laughs> it was a good read, but it was a tough read. But The Night Watchmen is is very similar but like a little less like you know the feeling right here <laughs> so um yeah that was a great pick that we did so we all felt like that was a very heavy option <laughs> that we weren't maybe necessarily anticipating so for the next book we chose the very secret society of irregular witches which was such a sweet and fun book um, you know, very different vibe, but very much more in like the cozy, excuse you, a very different vibe from the sentence, but the kind of perfect welcome to autumn, um, cozy, cozy book. Um, it is about a young woman who is a witch and the way that witches kind of exist in the society is that they can't be together because too much magic in one place could kind of break the code of silence, if you will. So she is recruited by sort of a mystery person via her YouTube, where she does witchy stuff, but like witchy stuff, <laughs> um, telling her that there are three young witches who need help being trained. So she goes despite her apprehension and meets these young kids and um, the story develops. Why? And the story develops from there. It's a very sweet story about chosen family. All the characters are fun. Um, it is also a romance novel with like grumpy sunshine um, trope, which like was fine. So we, I, I mean, it was fun and enjoyable. Like, I would say two and a half stars. I enjoyed it. Um, but it wasn't revolutionary or groundbreaking. Um, and we like didn't, there wasn't much to talk about with the book. The book that we are all reading is called The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina, um, which is like a magical realism story. The author is Latina. I don't know, I don't remember what um, country she's from, but I haven't started the book yet, but that is um, for our up club, upcoming book club um, hangout. So yeah, I will definitely update you about that one and our next books um, in the next video. But if you don't have a book club, whether virtual or in person and you're an avid reader, I would recommend it. It's such a nice experience to read books with other people, even if it's a small book club, which gets me to my next um, book. So growing up, my dad was always reading. He still is always reading. And he would avidly read Stephen King, Dean Koontz, and other like thriller writers, Tammy Hogue, like I just he has and he likes hard copies and he keeps every copy. So his office 
um, at work is just filled with all of these like fiction books. So when I kept getting recommendations like via TikTok and um, you know YouTubers about this book called The Only One Left, I was like, you know, maybe my dad would want to read this at the same time as me. So um, I pitched it to him. I was like, hey, dad, do you want to have like a little mini father daughter book club since I now read thrillers? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that would be great. So sent him the book. We both got it. And we were like, how much of the book should we read for the first week? And he was like, why don't we go to chapter 20, see how we're doing. And I could not put it down and ended up on like chapter 25. And I was like, so... <laughs> sorry I like went too far and he was like oh that's okay I'll just catch up to you and we were both like at that point in the book we were like god who did it like what's going on and like we were not prepared for how how bonkers of an ending but like it was so good <laughs> so it's a story of like a woman who is like a home health aide and she had, they don't really tell you in the beginning what happened, but she had been suspended for an accident that occurred with one of her patients. And so she is brought back to this home health aid. And it turns out that the woman that she is now required to take care of um, is a woman who was accused of basically very similar to like a Lizzie Borden situation. Um, she was accused but never convicted of killing her entire family. And you know, there's like lore about her in the town that they grew up in. And so she's kind of like, well, I'm helping this woman who is like paralyzed and needs help, but like, I don't know that I want to, but that's like it. That's like the only option that I have. And you know, there's a lot of parallels between their stories. And it's, you know, it's a very interesting, complex relationship that begins to develop. So um, yeah, and then the, the ending is just not at all what I was expecting. It was really like the twist just kept coming. I thought it was great. We were both stunned and thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I've never, I've never gasped out loud <laughs> while reading a book. And I think I did like twice. So if you're on the flip side of like the cozy, like kind of thriller vibe for the autumn, um, that book was really, really great. And uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend it. So I also just read Unraveling by Peggy Orenstein. And let me read to you the um, like subtitle of the book. Uh, what I learned about life while shearing sheep, dyeing wool and making the world's ugliest sweater. Now, Peggy Orenstein is a journalist and she's written a lot about young girls and young boys and sort of like socializing and um, gender roles. And so this book was really interesting because again, it's kind of a pandemic, right? Where she was like, everything had to slow down. So the unraveling is, you know, she sort of shares her feelings and insecurities as we all had during the pandemic, um, and attributes it to unraveling. <laughs> so it is a double entendre. And but also her sort of hobby that she takes up like she is a knitter, but she's like, this is my chance to do like this long term project. Um, so she like goes out and shears a sheep. She gets a spinning wheel and spins it and like prepares the fleece and dyes it and talks about like the knitting community in general. Um, it was fun because she is based in the Bay Area where I lived and really first got into the knitting community. And my boss from the store I worked at in Oakland is featured pretty heavily in the book. So that was entertaining. Um, yeah, I think it's a good, it's a good book if you're trying to explain to someone the knitting community. 
And it's also just a fun look into the knitting community. If you're like a newer knitter, like maybe since the pandemic you picked up knitting, I think this would be a really great book to kind of give some context to the larger knitting community. Um, and just like, yeah, just introduce yourself a little more into, into like the, the absurdity <laughs> of our community. Um, yeah, I thought, I thought it was really enjoyable. I'm not sure that I was the audience being so ingrained and already naturally dying and, um, you know, being a spinner. But, um, yeah, I like kind of wanted, like, I was like, if, if, you know, like sometimes I talk to my family about it and none of them are knitters. And I was like, this is like what I want to give my aunt who asks me at Thanksgiving, like, what, like, tell me about what you do. And I'm like, you should read this book. <laughs> so I thought it was a fun read, definitely. Um, and like I said, it's not for everyone, but uh, I did, I did really enjoy it. And last, but certainly not least, far from least, um, this past weekend, I went to Powell's to pick up Phoebe Wall's new book called Phoebe's Diary. It is a young adult book that is that features her incredible illustrations and is really like a coming of age high school story about like finding yourself being in a relationship for the first time being a young woman in a relationship for the first time and all of those insecurities and I blew through it I read it in like you know I started it Saturday afternoon and finished it Sunday morning um, and it was just such a joy to read. I don't often f find adolescent stories, whether in media or in books, to feel like I felt when I was in high school. And this really felt like relatable. <laughs> and it was really healing to read, to like hear those insecurities, but to be, you know, looking at it through 30 year old eyes and to be like, wow, you know, it just nothing feels as dire as it felt <laughs> at the time. Um, but yeah, it was just such she did such a great job on it. Um, the illustrations really like were so sweet to be added into the context of it. And it just felt very familiar and comforting. Um, and awkward, but like in a way that is so nice. Like, I just really, really loved it. If you want to like heal your inner high school self, I think it's a really sweet read. Um, yeah, and I would highly recommend getting like the physical book so that you can kind of appreciate um, the way the illustrations are formatted on the page and stuff. So yeah. I yeah just highly recommend it was such a pleasure to read it was so cozy and lovely and um, yeah I'm glad it exists and I'm glad that like one day I can give the teens in my life that book to kind of read and experience because I wish I had had that and not like Chuck Palahniuk <laughs> when I was in high school. And last but certainly not least is all of the books that I'm currently reading. I'm definitely on a witch kick. <laughs> and if you didn't know, we'll be streaming via Discord um, over the month of October a few different witchy horror and just like cozy movies. It kicks off this Saturday. If you're watching this the day that it's posted, that's tomorrow with Practical Magic. And these are all taking place on my Discord server. So again, the link to sign up is down below if you'd like to join us for some knitting and uh, movie watching. So the first book that I'm reading is called Payback's a Witch. And it is again, like a cozy witch book. It is a unique premise and it is gay, which I'm really into. So I'm listening to that on audiobook. I feel like I'm gonna finish it in the next couple of days because I've been really enjoying it. Um, someone returns to her hometown 
and then teams up with a couple other women to get revenge on someone who treated them all really badly. And uh, it's, it's a real fun romp so far. So <clears throat> reading that, I'm also on Kindle reading The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic. This book just came out. It was actually a top pick for us to read for book club, but I didn't realize it didn't come out until like September, whatever it came out. <laughs> so now I have it via my library holds and I've been reading that as I eat lunch and stuff. It has, it is described as like a mix of Gilmore Girls and Practical Magic, maybe something of that ilk. So um, a lot of the advanced readers of the book really liked it. It's been blowing up on TikTok and stuff. So yeah, I'm reading that and they're very much like in the same vein, but that's very much the vibe that I'm going for. So I'm not mad about it. So yeah, that's my long winded uh, description of all the books that I have read recently. I really, really hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me chatting about books and again if you are interested in any of the books that I uh, mention in this episode please use the bookshop.org link down below to make your purchases it helps me out so much if you've read any good books lately please leave a comment down below with the title and author i'm always looking for more books to add to my queue and i know y'all read a lot of similar books to me i'm definitely looking for some horror and thriller for spooky season and then maybe also some like Christmassy romance books. I have some on my shelves already, but um, yeah, if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll, I'll see you next time. Bye.